A few days ago, I came across a post by a Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Hua Chunying, where she said that the arrival of spring brings an enchanting pink sea of cherry blossoms to Wuxi, Jiangsu. It made me very excited, so seizing the opportunity of the splendid spring weather, we embarked on a cultural walk in Wuxi. The starting point of this journey is the ancient Grand Canal, which has endured 3,000 years of wind and rain. I think taking a trip down the Grand Canal, you can immerse yourself into this ancient Chinese culture and look at the beautiful scenery while cooling off if it's hot outside, or enjoying some tea with your friends on the boat. So I think it's a really great experience. At the Qingming Bridge, I discovered an interesting museum. Jinchun gold bricks. Is this black brick actually made out of gold? Every step. Of the scenery in the ancient city of Wuxi, we can see the grandeur and the wealth of this ancient city during the Ming and Qing dynasties. The Jiangnan charm of Qingming Bridge sparked my interest in Chinese history, and the picturesque scenery at Nianhua Bay on the shore of Taihu Lake perfectly fulfilled my imagination. Donning Hanfu and stepping into Nianhua Bay. I felt as if I had traveled back into the Tang and Song dynasties. Zen is the key word for Nianhua Bay, where one can feel the serene and tranquil atmosphere of Zen everywhere. These peas are so fresh and sweet. I just can't stop eating them. The refinement of Wuxi extends beyond its cuisine and to its rich and diverse traditional culture. At Nianhua Bay, I was fortunate enough to experience a small glimpse of it. I hear there's a shop here where you can try bamboo weaving. Bamboo weaving is an intangible cultural heritage here in China, so let's go check it out. This is my bamboo making teacher for today, Mr. Shi. Shi Lao, can you write something? First, I'm going to learn how to make this bamboo into an earring. Look. I thought making a bamboo easy looked really easy when Mr. Shu did it. Turns out it's actually really hard to make all the bamboo stay in one place. Mr. Shu has been studying for 15 years, so I think I need a few more years to make an earring. Look at all these beautiful perfume satchels. I want to learn how to make one for myself. Needlework is really hard. In the ancient times, people would give their perfume satchels to the people that they maybe had a crush on or something like that. I think. Uh, <laughs> If I finish this satchel, I'll try and give it to a friend. Wow, how shall I do this, Oh, I don't chew it. Wow, I tell is so amazing. I just finished making my perfume satchel. Now I can give it to my friend. Our final stop was the cherry blossom forest. Yuan Tao Zhu, located on the shores of Taihu Lake in Wuxi. This is one of the world's top three cherry blossom viewing spots. However, perhaps due to its fame, the enthusiasm of tourists has overwhelmed Yuan Tao Zhu, and I wasn't among those fortunate enough to experience it. Nevertheless, 
the rest of Wuxi did not disappoint me. The cherry blossoms at Nianhua Bay remained beautiful, providing a perfect conclusion to our cultural walk. Sitting under the spring sun and underneath the beautiful cherry blossom trees is a joyful experience. And I have all these beautiful snacks here. I recommend everyone to come to Wuxi at least once in your life to see these beautiful cherry blossoms. As for Yuan Taoju, which I didn't get to see with my own eyes, it has become a perfect reason for me to come back to Wuxi next year.